So how do we get the maximum payload up to the belt or the belt of asteroids around this planet at any rate? It's all a bit cheaty in space engineers. Anyway, we've got a base up there, we've got mining to do up there, there's uranium up there, how do we get a nice big payload up there? We build a disposable rocket. How do I build straight onto a spigot so I can charge it and load it full of fuel? Slap down a small light armor block of the small grid variety and then you build your connector on top of that connected at the, the connection point on the side. It's got four nice little conveyor connectors. You make sure you build it on that. It overbalances, it topples down and falls straight onto your connector. Because large grid to large grid is easy, you just build it in a loop and have two connectors facing one another and lock them together. But going to small grid can be a bit fiddly. Adapting over, so that's my simple trick. If there's a simpler one, I haven't bothered to find it because that one's pretty simple. Topple that over there, that's now nicely balanced. I can stack a whole bunch of stuff on top of that, fuel tanks and cargo. And when I eventually build a battery, I can come back down to this connector and tell it to lock. And then my battery will be charging and my tanks will be fuelable directly from the underground tanks underneath this base. So, how many cargo bays can I put into orbit with the minimum use of hydrogen is my trick. So, I'm going to use one big tank. Two big tanks is plenty for going to the asteroid belt. If you have a big tank and a small tank, I think for this sort of rocket, that's pretty good. That's the sweet spot. If you want to cut back to the bare minimum to get into space, then I would get rid of the extra small tank and just have the big tank like this. And I'm going for five medium cargo bays because medium cargo bays are sort of a, a unit of measurement. The smalls for the small grid are just tiny and a bit useless. And the larges, I'd only be moving one, maybe two large storages, whereas these, I can add one, I can remove one, I can decide how many is pushing it, how many is easy. I can use them as a sort of measuring stick for what kind of a cargo I can get into orbit at what expense. So now I've got a battery. Turn off my rocket pants land on my little pad of convenience and fluff around with this connector locked on battery can now have a nice charge it's nice and stable i can build heavy things hanging out the sides if i want to it's all snugly locked in place until launch so, one hydrogen tank, five medium cargo. I think the optimal safe build for getting this to the roids in your general neighborhood, not the ones on the other side of the planet, would be this big hydrogen tank here and then a little one tacked to the side. But if you want to push your luck and your asteroid is pretty close by and easy to get to and your load is in all steel plates and super heavy then maybe go for just the big hydrogen tank and the five cargoes that would be maximum luck pushing going to build the luxury edition 
and then I'll cut it back to the basic version for launch. It's my thinking. Just because I want to see. So, this is the bottom of the ship per se. Small hydrogen tank is a bit of a box with two outlets on it. So one of those outlets in this case can be a reversing jet. Again, a deluxe version of this ship might have two reversing jets. So that's a nice luxury. Whereas your bare minimum version, you probably want well, I probably want to fly with just the one reversing jet because I'm just very fond of the whole seat of the pants thing. But if you build an exact copy of this, I think you can safely... This will have six downward engines and two reverse engines and a maneuvering engine in each direction hydrogen thrusters wise and I'll give it a pair of screamers a pair of jets I think could go with three I think two will be enough two small jets just to speed up its flight in the at atmosphere have them on for the first eight to ten K somewhere So, because we're built on a connector, we're not using a big hydrogen thruster at the bottom in a classic rockety kind of shape. Using my own mount the, the Super Draco thrusters high up and on the sides where they're not melting my platform, then I put the strafing thrusters down on the connector. And they're firing sideways so they're not melting anything down here so it just makes things a little bit safer for the landing well the, the, for the reusable version it, it's safer on the, for the coupler on the landing but this one it just doesn't cook it as much on the takeoff I guess being a disposable rocket so there we go we've got six facing down there we go, luxury, two braking engines, six thrusting engines, slap a couple of jets on it, a gyro, oh, of course, pop a token landing gear down here on the tank, so when you're in space you can turn around and fly it like an aircraft and use that as your landing foot on your starbase. couple of jets the trick is of course that the jets are just cranked up to maximum scream and an on off buttons popped on the dashboard and so you just switch them on while you're in the atmosphere and they blast you upwards and you switch them off when you reach the edge of the atmosphere and you save your battery and you take the rest of your battery up to the starbase to join the glorious hole so that's the general layout of the deluxe edition of how do you put lots of cargo into space with the bare minimum of gear. Vertical launch rocket, one large one small tank, pair of jets, big stack of cargoes, catapult yourself straight upwards and then once you're in space it turns into a more conventional ship configuration so we just have to label everything set up our, our buttons put our battery on recharge disposable rocket number six charge the battery up I'll slap a bunch of cargo in the sides whack the taps on fill it full of hydrogen What I might do is whittle it down to the bare basics, 
get rid of the small hydrogen tank and one, th one reverse thruster, one lifting thruster, keep the same amount of jet engines, load it full of cargo and see just, just how, how narrow a margin I can push this into space. If you make a copy of that, you should be able to get most things into space. Don't load it full of just steel plate, but your general miscellaneous components for whatever contraptions you're building in space. That can take a nice wadge of them up there, and then it just becomes a little part about in spaceship until it runs out of gas, and then you pull it apart, and all the parts contribute to your space program up there. What I'm going to do is saw off the small tank, two of the thrusters and put the engines and the foot back on and I'm going to load it full of cargo for my asteroid and then I'm going to lift it off and that'll be a five thruster version so if the five thruster version can get five medium cargoes to space then this six thruster version is a deluxe disposable space taxi for you. So yes, if you want to lob a wadge of parts up into the stratosphere, this is the simplest way I know. If you build something that takes off like an aircraft, then you're going to need hovering engines to hover it like an aircraft, you're going to need thrusting engines to help you sort of tilt forward and blast. Could just be relying on hydrogen at that point, I don't know. But as far as minimising the weight of gear down to a bare minimum number of engines and thrusters, doing it this way, they all mostly point in one direction. means you get the most out of them. Obviously it means you have to be relatively careful in your steering. You don't do any steering at all for about the first 15 kilometers. And when you're up in space you don't want to be doing space proggies next to asteroids or treating this like it's disaster areas stunt ship or something. It's not maneuverable. This version has okay brakes I think. Again, as long as you're not loaded down with a ton of steel plate, throwing your brakes out. It all comes down to cargo in a big way. But as long as you're sensible and balanced with the cargo, I think this is about the most minimalistic way I know to get what you need up there. Building straight onto a spigot is good, I can just turn on stockpile, I'll have a tank of hydrogen, I won't have to shuffle my ship over to somewhere to get it, I won't have to mine ice and then load a, a H2O2 generator that's on my ship with ice to make the fuel for my ship, I'm just sourcing it from underground. Okay, so this is my launch footage for the whittled down version You'll see when we get into space what I've chopped off and what I've kept, it's pretty simple. But I've given us buttons, number 9 there is for the screamers on the end. 7 and 8 control the thrust of each small rocket, so maxed out at 98 kilonewtons for a small rocket. I've got the landing gear for up in space, and I've launched. Away we go. The main engines are on too, so they're on. They're at max kilonewtons, the screamers are on. We're accelerating upwards. So the number four engines that are off is my one token reversing engine that I left on this thing. So I replaced the small tank with some bits of light armor and I've stuck the engines back on them, put a foot back on them. But there's only five thrusters now. And one hydrogen tank, five loaded with gear, cargo, 
containers. And this is about the cheapest right on the borderline way I know of punching your decent load of stuff up into space from my experiments so far. So I'm still I'm too busy getting pretty photos to be checking out what my speed is. Okay, I've maxed out my speed, so I should be killing off my engine thrust to save my fuel. There we go. No need to be a space maverick when you've got such a small fuel tank. So by tweaking the, uh, the thrust output on my engines, I can just keep twerking it up to a decent speed but I have to be careful of my height I'm getting to the dead zone getting to the point where my screamers won't be doing anything anymore and I'll be relying on these thrusters and yet where are we? we're accelerating, yes, yes yes we are accelerating now Our engines are maxed out, I've got five engines maxed out, I've got the jets on. The jets must have reached the edge of their power though. I'm relying, but the gravity is tapering off. So I should be fine now. There was a bit there that I was decelerating. But not violently, it wasn't a brown trousers moment but I could have left it at maximum throttle just about because there's a point there under 1G I think when I start losing my jets not sure but I need to keep the thrust up high if I'm only using 5 thrusters I think with 6 thrusters you can be a bit more thrifty and clever so right now I've got it cranked again, but the gravity is dropping, we're below half. So the thrust needs to go back down again. The jets are off. The forward thruster is still off, we don't need, we've got our dampeners on. So any sideward skewing behaviour, they'll cancel out but I won't have my reverse thruster constantly kicking in and slowing me down. Back to 39 kilonewtons per engine. Time for a course change. I'm high enough above the surface and the gravity is low enough now. I like to head straight up initially to try and outrun that gravity as quickly as possible. So we set a course for the Platinum Roid, which is where we discovered our cave and made our base. Which is 21 kilometers away. And we're down to quarter gravity. So we can probably drop our engine thrust. Just about halve at this point. You just about need a second crew member constantly keeping an eye on the speed and the thrust while you plot your course and keep an eye out for pirates and do other things. So we're just accelerating at 19 kilonewtons per engine from five engines. And we've got 36% of our tank left. Which is fine, gravity will be less and less, we'll need to burn less and less. Our electrical power is 7 days, we'll be taking plenty of power up to the station with us, battery full of power. Two jet engines doesn't drain much for a short trip. definitely pirates lurking around in these belts and an unmanoeuvrable ship full of cargo like this one is a bit of a victim but it's a cheap victim 
did not cost me very much to build this ship. Quite quick to build, obviously I was doing uh, Dummy Industries Nano building cheatery when I built it before your very eyes. Zoom goes the pirate. Sorry mate, we're going too fast to interact with you. Speed for the win. Yes, so I speed built this rather than flying backwards and forwards between my ship and a box a thousand times. As much as I love to do that. But just in overall resource cost. One big tank, some cheap cargoes, it all gets pulled apart and put into the boxes on the asteroid base anyway. That's the great thing about a disposable rocket. If I did overbuild it, it wouldn't really matter because everything I'm taking with me is on a one-way trip. I'm taking it to this base, I'm unloading it and then I'm grinding the ship down to parts and unloading that. Except for the battery. The battery will be lifted out and attached to the base and drained. Because it's good to be brutally efficient about these things. It's nice to have a space cruise, even if you're flying a piece of junk. And I do particularly enjoy rocket lift offs. Having a jet that flies up and then just tilts and blasts its way to space. In theory it's, it's kind of cooler because we don't do that here on Earth. Not efficiently anyway. But for some reason in this game I like the vertical takeoff rocket. It's terribly satisfying. Just blasting straight on upwards. Now I know where this Ah, hole spotted. I know where my uh, my waypoints are, but trying to spot the hole and the right angle to go through the aptly named hole to get into our asteroid, that's a whole other tricky business. Okay, stick my bum around the corner to create some braking thrust. So we do that. It's terrifyingly close. If you put your camera in the right place. Might have been going a bit too fast, but I wanted to do a space proggy, so I arrived outside this big hole here. So I wouldn't be hanging around outside at low speeds for too long, waiting to be pirate bait. I wanted to go from high speed to ninjaing my way into the hole like a cunning butcher. There it is. A little grind spot next to it was our original platinum deposit, which just happened to be in a revealing position to let us know about the great and glorious hole here. Which leads into a charming little inverted space sausage inside the asteroid that the pirates rarely bumble into and that we've set up a cozy little base in. And I'm down to 6% hydrogen because I wasn't exactly uh, captain conservative when it came to my resources. But that's all right, we're here now. Wherever I grind to a halt in this particular vicinity, I'll be able to unload my ship. Ship landing area on the bottom, because there's still a tiny week of 0.06 gravity here, so we've actually got a floor and our own natural gravity, 
and we've got an upstairs platform with natural gravity too. So next door there you can see a two hydrogen tank four cargo disposable rocket. It's already had its engines hacked off. It's already had its cargo unloaded. It's just a matter of chopping it up in a way where we can recover its battery properly. So I'm going to nestle this one in right next door to it. Unload this one. This one will get the same fate. So it was a, a whittling down process. That last one had two tanks of hydrogen and I had most of the second tank when I arrived. 1% left in the tanks, take note. So with a large and a small tank you'll be right for getting something cosily into your asteroid. Yes, that's my efforts. 5 medium cargo, full of gear, up here on one tank, sorted. I won't put you through the unloading process, but yes, that just gets unloaded and then they just both get chopped to pieces. One tank, five mediums. It's my current state of the disposable art.